Remember the first time you went out to dinner as an adult? You're like, Mike, I've got a job. I'm going out to dinner. And then the bill comes and you're like, I'm moving home. I need daddy to pay for everything. Whenever I go out to dinner, I always get a steak because I'm a man. No, I just always have to get the steak. You know, my wife always makes fun of me. She's like, why do you even get a menu? I wish, I wish I wasn't like that. I wish I liked fish. I'm sure most of you like fish. I wish I was the guy in the restaurant that was like, you know what, I'll get the fish because I enjoy disgusting food. <laughs> it's disgusting. Fish don't even like fish. That's why they're always frowning. I was like, mm. What smells? Oh, it's me. I'm mostly healthy. I uh, worked out today. I know I don't need to. Uh, when I'm home in New York City, I work out at the Chinatown YMCA. And I realize when people hear the Chinatown YMCA, they think, oh, that's not like a serious place to work out. And it's not. <laughs> it's not at all. It's mostly little kids learning how to swim and really old Chinese people with their parents. I didn't even know you could live to that age. <laughs> but I tell you, watching a 90-year-old on an elliptical really inspires me to die in my 70s. <laughs> it looks like a machine is eating someone's grandma. But I love my why. You know, it's, it's different from a normal health club. There's never moments when you think, oh my gosh, look at how much weight that guy's lifting. It's more like, oh my gosh, that guy's smoking. <laughs> on a treadmill and dress pants. It's very business casual. Sure, my Y doesn't have some of the amenities, but it also doesn't have the normal health club distractions. I don't have to deal with loud music or people that are in shape. I walk around my Y and I'm like, you know what, I'm doing okay. Maybe I should teach a class. Hi, welcome to Advanced Elliptical. Doesn't matter if you don't have workout clothes on, we're not gonna be raising our heart rate. <laughs> so let's step on, pick a show, and think about what we're gonna eat. Okay. <laughs> Who's having a burger, huh? <laughs> let's practice eating fries. I was watching Animal Planet. Do you know that the male seahorse has the baby? And I was thinking, why don't they just call that the female seahorse? <laughs> You know, it's just some stubborn scientist, you know? Yeah, that one there is male seahorse. Oh, Bill, that one's having a baby. Male has the baby. You're fired. My favorite animal is the manatee, the sea cow. Have you ever seen that animal? The manatee is endangered, and I think it's because it's out of shape. It looks like a retired football player. You ever seen it on the Discovery Channel? It's always floating around like, I'm bloated. <laughs> Too much pizza. <laughs> and the manatee is also called the sea cow. I mean, that kind of sounds like an insult. It's almost as if the manatee was introduced to the ocean. The other animals were like, who's your new guy? And the manatee was like, oh, hi, everyone. You can call me the manatee. You're right, sea cow. <laughs> uh, name's manatee, fellas. Sea cow, fat ass. <laughs> Doesn't the manatee kind of look like a guest on the Ricky Lake show? <laughs> the manatee be like, uh, Ricky, I'm here because I'm endangered. And then one of those mean people in the audience would offer up the advice, yeah, I want to say something to the sea pig. <laughs> That's sea cow. Whatever. <laughs> sea pig, you got to get yourself an education and a job. <laughs> I live in the ocean. <laughs> it just so happened you live in the ocean because you ain't got no job. <laughs> I don't know what you're... You gotta get in Weight Watchers, some kind of program. I have a layer of blubber to keep my body warm in the water. <laughs> Whatever, talk to my hand. But so I was in Philadelphia for the event, 
at this sound check, and they had constructed this huge amphitheater next to the Ben Franklin Parkway, which is a highway, and the amphitheater was empty. And I, I was up there doing the sound check, and I looked on the highway, and it was already filled with a million people. And I looked at those people, and I thought, wow, a million people that don't want to see me do stand-up comedy. <laughs> Because they were all there to see the Pope, and not one of those million people was thinking, I hope the Pope has a comedian open for him. <laughs> but I shouldn't have been surprised. In the weeks leading up to the event, there were all these interviews. They're like, you're opening for the Pope. There's gonna be millions of people there. Are you nervous? Are you gonna prepare? And I'm like, I'm definitely nervous. I'm definitely gonna prepare. Anyway, I didn't prepare. <laughs> So I was on stage at the sound check looking at those million people and I thought, I gotta come up with some Philadelphia jokes. But what do I know about Philadelphia? I know cheesesteaks, Liberty Bell, and I just watched this ESPN 30 for 30 documentary about Eagles fans in 1968 throwing snowballs at someone dressed like Santa Claus. <laughs> That's all I knew. So I went off and I tried to think of some Philadelphia jokes. Before you knew it, the event started and I was introduced and I walked out and the amphitheater was still empty. And, you know, because the Pope wasn't there and it was a Catholic event, so everyone was at the bar. <laughs> so I was like, all right, I guess I'm just gonna do my show for no one. So I go, it's good to be here in Philadelphia. And I heard this roar behind me. <sighs> and it was all the people on the highway. And I was like, all right, I'll play to them. I was like, Philadelphia loves the Pope. <sighs> and I was like, not that I was worried, but you guys weren't that nice to Santa. Nothing. <laughs> Silence. And then I heard something that sounded like booing, because it was booing. <laughs> it wasn't everyone, it was like 10%, so 100,000 people. <laughs> booing my Santa joke before they saw their religious leader who was gonna talk to them about mercy. So I did what anyone would do when they're being booed. I acted like I wasn't being booed. I did some jokes about being lazy and food, and I kind of got the crowd back. And I got off stage, disaster averted, and I pulled out my phone and I started checking Twitter and I saw the most angry, hateful tweets I've ever seen. <laughs> How dare you bring up the Santa incident? <laughs> Never come back to Philly. <laughs> I wish I could punch you. Bring up the Santa incident in Philly is like bring up the Holocaust in Germany. <laughs> that was an actual tweet. <laughs> of course, the difference being that the Holocaust happened and Santa has never existed. <laughs> At that moment, there was a tap on my shoulder and it was one of the organizers. And they're like, do you want to meet the Pope? And I was like, I'm good. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Of course, I'd love to meet the Pope. So I was put in this room with some of the other performers and we were lined up and the Pope came in and then he started greeting people. And I noticed people that the Pope was meeting, they were saying something to the Pope and I didn't know what I was gonna say to the Pope. And before you knew it, the Pope was right in front of me and I just said, don't bring up the Santins. 